Now the boys at the very front and we're joined by two team principals who've been enjoying plenty of success so far this year. Martin Whitmarsh from McLaren and Christian Horner from Red Bull. Let's all just squeeze up a little bit because it's very loud here in the pit lane. And Start with you if we can please, Christian. Mark Webber has extended his contract for next year. Did you have to have something in writing in that contract that there's equal footing in the team between him and uh, Sebastian? I think you said it's Mark going to be treated equally in the team. Well, he has been ever since he's been with us. So, yeah, absolutely. He, you know, he, he wanted to stay. We wanted to keep him. It was a very, very easy decision to, uh, you know, to reach. And, um, you know, we're delighted that Mark will be with the team for another year. What I'm fascinated about is why has he got a better suntan than you? And the question is then to you, Martin, please tell us. You've won three races the last two. Can you make this three in a row first time in some time? I wish we'd won three races in the last two, Eddie, but I think we've won two in the last two. Thank you for <laughs> catching me out on that. When I get you back, but, don't uh, you worry. But we would like to make it three in a row, but these guys look pretty quick, pretty strong, so I don't think there's any point giving predictions. I think, you know, but one, anything can happen in qualifying, and then the next hour, I think uh, anything can happen in the race. It's a fantastic circuit. These guys are pushing hard on the face of it. They've got a great lead in the championship. I think we're just going to try and win as many races as we can, and they're not going to make it easy for us, nor will Ferrari. I'm a little bit concerned. I heard you earlier on Radio 5 Live talking to Stefano Domenicali. It seemed like a love-in. You two were cuddling before we joined you on air. <laughs> What's going wrong with Formula 1? The team principals seem to be getting along. Well, there's a lot better class of people in Formula 1 now than there used to be, as you know, Sorry, David. I think that's a reference. I'm definitely on your case from now on. Any time that you've seen me nice about McLaren, they're over. You've you're, never been nice about off. McLaren, have you? Hang on, hang on. Give, give us about 15 minutes yeah. and it'll be business yeah. as normal. Well, that'll be a good thing. And let's talk about the way the business has gone, because it really does seem like both Ferrari and McLaren have caught you guys up in terms of the development race. Is that because your car is so good, the changes that you can make now are marginal, whereas the other guys have had bigger leaps to make throughout the course of the season? What, what, what do you put that down to? Well, I think that's deceptive, because I think if you go all the way back to Melbourne, you know, we've had close company, whether it be for McLaren or Ferrari, at pretty much every single Grand Prix. We've just taken our opportunities, we've grabbed them with both hands and, um, you know, managed to, to, to deliver upon that. So we're now, you know, at a stage of the championship where the teams have converged a bit and you've got, you know, five or six drivers that come to each Grand Prix with, with a genuine chance of uh, being able to challenge for a win. And how are you motivating your team to believe that they can still win the drivers, the constructors, or both of the, of the World Championships with the gap so big? Well, you know, as a mathematician, uh, you know, until it's mathematically impossible, you've got to believe in it. But, uh, you know, we're realistic. I think at the moment, we're just trying to win some races. And, uh, you know, we can't control what a good job Red Bull are doing, for instance. So we just got to try and do the best job we can. If we can win some races, great. If that uh, we accumulate enough points, but at the moment there's a fearsome lead that uh, my friend here has. But uh, we haven't given up, and we're going to keep pushing. Christian, you've had, by your own standards, pretty miserable re return for points here in this circuit. What are you going to try and do to change that around here? Yeah, we've only finished second here the last two years, so. So, uh, by your own standards, I'm talking about. <laughs> by our own standards. So, uh, I mean, it's a track that doesn't play to our key strengths. You know, it's very horsepower dependent in sectors one and three here. But, you know, we're determined to, to try and, and break our duck here this weekend. You know, Mark got the pole here last year. Both drivers are fired up. They've come back from a good break. And, uh, yeah, you know, really uh, motivated to get a big, big result this weekend. We know you're both motivated, you're, you know, your teams are both capable of winning, but what is the underlying pace telling us from Friday and Saturday morning? What is your strategy saying? What is yours? Well, uh, again, they've got, they've got a very small wing, so we've had to put a very small wing on. I hope we both got it right, particularly this afternoon, but I think uh, I, I can't tell. I mean, you know, we've, we've had a break, people have put some new parts on, you can see a lot of flow viz going on on the car, which is, to people like him and he, who, who don't understand all these things, we clearly have a lot of new parts, and, uh, you know, I think in the running we've had so far, you know, I, you'd, you'd say that Red Bull, Ferrari, McLaren look uh, reasonably strong, but I wouldn't be able to call it, and I don't think uh, necessarily qualifying conditions. I mean, it's, we're in a little bit of sun, just about going, but uh, I think it's likely to be damp by the time we get qualifying in a minute, and I think again, it'll be being on the track at the right time with the right tyres, driver doing a great job to make sure we can get through qualifying. OK, Martin, Christian, thank you both very much indeed. And it's lovely to see you getting on so well. But uh, no more cuddling in front of the cameras, at least for the rest of the season. Because we've got to make this into a battle, OK? Uh, uh, congratulations to Eddie on his suntan, by the way. I mean, I think he's won the competition uh, this summer. Um, it was never in doubt anyway, was it? Come on, be <laughs> No, serious. it wasn't. This man has a tan in the middle of winter. Thank you both very much. And, David, we're going to lose you off to the commentary box in just a moment.